tomorrow, the state of Illinois will be entering its bridge phase, the final step towards the full reopening of our communities that please God will occur in less than a month. And this evening will be my bridge phase as this will be my final online pre-Shabbat drasha after more than a year's worth of online drashot during this pandemic. Why this week and this drasham? Because our shuls have reopened and the time has come for everyone to return to shul. And because this parasha is also a bridge, as Rav Shamshin Rafal Hirsch noted, between the sacred and the mundane, between the miracles of creation, the wonders of the Exodus, the sanctity of Vayikram and the simple, unpretentious life of the Jewish people in the desert. For while we often associate the book of Bamidbar with the great challenges that Moshe Rabbeinu faced, the betrayal of the spies and the rebellion of Korach, the curses of Bilam and the courage of Pinchas, in reality, those events were momentary flashes in either the second or the 40th year of the Jews in the desert. While in between, for 38 years, there were no significant sins or, or events. In fact, the Torah is silent, offering nary a clue of what happened between Korach and the death of Miriam some 38 years later, which means that Bamidbar is in essence more about what didn't happen than what did. It is a desert amid blossoming stories and shady characters. It is about regular, ordinary life and not the screaming headlines of failure and sin. Or as the Lubavitcher Rebbe Zetzal taught, Bamidbar teaches us the meaning of a humble life as though we lived in a desert with nothing around us to react and nothing around us to distract. And this is a most powerful message. And it explains the role of this Sefer within the context of the entire Torah as the bridge towards a life of routine, quiet and calm. And yet this week, our lives have been anything but routine, quiet and calm. As the annual end of Ramadan Palestinian riots have spread beyond Yerushalayim and the Temple Mount onto the streets of cities where Arabs and Jews had lived together in peace. It has been a week in which people lost their lives, in which hundreds were injured. Shuls, schools, and personal property have been destroyed in riots, or as President Rivlin called them, pogroms, and during which Hamas has launched thousands of missiles into civilian areas without regard for innocent human life while using their own innocence as shields to their terror bases. What can the silence, the desert, the column of Bamidbar teach us at a time like this? The answer may be found in an alternative name used for this Sefer, a name found in Chazal and which is Sefer HaPikudim, the book of numbers. Why numbers? Because of the two times in this Sefer that the Jews were counted. First in this week's parasha 
And then 38 years later in Parashat Pinchas. But why should the counting of Jews be a preeminent feature of this book? So much so that Chazal chose to call it Sefer HaPikudim, the book of numbers. Explained the Nitziv in his introduction to his Perushan Chumash, because if you compare the two countings, you'll find subtle differences, which belie the fact that the first census occurred when the Jewish people lived a life of miracles, when they existed b'midat tiferet shahalach liyamin Moshe, while the second counting took place as the Jews stood at the edge of the land of Moab, about to wage war, unlike any war they had ever waged before, because it was then, as they were about to enter the final phase of their journey and enter the land of Israel, that they needed to learn how to fight a natural war, aided by God, but still a natural war so that they could conquer all of the kings and all of the armies occupying Eretz Yisrael. Wrote the Nitziv that these two censuses, censuses represent the transition from living a miraculous experience, existence to a more normal, natural life when we would have to plant and to harvest, conquer, and defend, which is precisely the life our brethren in the land of Israel and Eretz Yisrael have been zochet to live. They have fought battles, as we commemorated just this past week on Yom Yerushalayim, battles in which the losses were great, but battles in which they defended the land and with God's help, and sometimes with truly miraculous events, they have liberated more of our sacred land. And this battle will be no different. For despite the distortions of the Arab press, the lies of Congresswomen Taib and Omar, the misguided outcry of the ignorant, whether those on television such as Trevor Noah or those on social media, the Israeli army has learned to fight and will defend its citizens from terror. And as Professor Gerald Steinberg reported, despite the political divide in Israel, many Israelis from left, right, and center are calling for a full-fledged military operation to destroy the thousands of missiles stockpiled in Gaza. As Council General Aviv Ezra reminded me just yesterday in our conversation on my weekly daytime dialogues program, we always need to remember WWAD. What would America do if someone shot a thousand missiles over its borders? What about 100? Or even what about just one? Would America stand by? Would America say that it has a mighty army and so it's unfair to respond? No, America wouldn't and neither will the state of Israel. According to the Nitziv, God gave us Sefer Bamidbar to prepare us for the next stage of Jewish history, to live natural lives, protect what is precious to us and defend our land and our rights. And for those of us in the diaspora, God gave us the voice to cry out, to use whatever tools we have to defend the state of Israel challenge the lies and support our sacred land. If we use social media, use it now for the state of Israel. 
If we write essays, write an op-ed to defend the state of Israel. And if we have relationships with those in the halls of power, use those relationships to strengthen their commitment to the right of Israel to defend itself. And then let's reach out to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to God and pray for the state of Israel. Hagen alea bevrat chastecha ufros alea sukat shalomecha. Pray for its protection and for peace. Pray for our destiny. Pray for the safety of our people. Shabbat Shalom.